So how's everyone doing? I am vibing. That's <laughs> good. You're you're vibing over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ben said he's vibing, and then he he was silent. The silent yeah. vibrator. <laughs> I am vibing as well. Oh my god. What's you going know? on? The silent vibrator. <laughs> nope. Hey, Dan, nope. <laughs> 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 First, what happened before that in the actual game? Well, before that, uh, a sheep fought a demigod for like right? 10 for seconds. Like a second. Yeah, for a, no, not even 10 seconds. Like six, six seconds. seconds. Six seconds, yeah. That's how long a round is? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah before she got hammered. So. The sheep got hammered. Yeah. But then later, so did Thought. <laughs> not me, the shield. I mean, to be fair, your arms you. took quite a quite a juicy beating. <laughs> well, they didn't break, apparently. Oh, they fucking did. Oh, my arms broke. What? I thought I, thought I made that clear. They were like yeah, jelly. <laughs> they were jelly. Oh, I don't remember. Yeah, he specifically he used... said, "Good thing he's not awake for this." Oh, yeah. yeah, he used power word heal on you. <laughs> right. Because your arms had jellified. I because know. he tried to hit the ground with his hammer to make an earthquake happen, and you and blocked it with your shield. I know. <laughs> you could have jumped. You could have just done a series you of just jumped. Jumped. You could jump. I didn't oh, know. what an idiot. You could have just jumped, but instead you blocked the earthquake hammer with your arms. I didn't know that's what he was doing. <laughs> I know. No, it's I'm I am so happy you did it because I'm defending that was myself. so fun. You that was so it. much fun. Yeah. So uh, he decided that he, after a few drinks, he decided that he was going to help you out uh, by fighting you and getting you ready uh, for your future endeavors. Um, give you his, his, I think what he was trying to say was, uh, you know, it's a, it's a whole different beast. Fighting an extremely powerful being is a pretty different experience and, uh, you know, it can it can leave you a bit shaken. So he decided that fighting him would be a great way to sort of give you that experience so that you're not caught off guard uh, when it's important. And uh, he bribed you into fighting him with promises of uh, anything you want, one piece of equipment. And uh, Lily accepted. And then the rest of you accepted. Well, actually, and, what uh, happened is Nefmir blasted him. That's, right. That's what happened. That's what started the fight. Oh, all of a sudden, Nefmir yeah, just it, fucking it was shot ju him. It was just an enthusiastic acceptance of this deal. I know. I know. Without anyone else's consent. Without anyone else's. Yeah, that's the point <laughs> and, I'm trying uh, to make. Well, because also, also, yeah, he said that um, if we lost, then he gets to go on a date with Lily or whatever. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I, th I think was there was some discussion before I did that. Yeah, a little bit. I guess the general short. sense that the majority <laughs> was okay with it. So without yeah. further ado, I just started the fight. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so you had the fight and, uh, you know, you handled yourselves pretty well. And uh, he was planning on, uh, you know, one big move to really knock you off your feet so to speak and thought slid in and and took the entire hit himself and jellified and uh passed out <laughs> and that was the end of the fight well actually the, the very most, end but... was he was laying down and whitmore ran up and yeah, put the yeah. rod on on him and clicked that's it. right that's right oh i forgot it. about that yeah. yeah that's right that's right that was great yeah yeah uh <laughs> i forgot uh, yeah, so that the, then the fight was effectively over, and uh, he used an extremely powerful healing spell to make Thought's arms no longer jelly, um, and uh, and that's where we left off in the game. Pretty much was uh, Whitmore's triumphant return um, out of fucking nowhere, <laughs> yeah. I was and wandering uh, around and. Surprise. And uh, Beaumont as well. 
that uh, oh. he came along with Beaumont as sort of a uh, muscle slash uh, he intends to he intends for for Beaumont for Beaumont for Whitmore to be sort of his uh, eyes and ears in this situation, not realizing that you guys had history. And then we moved into the online role playing, which became much more, much more in depth than I had expected it to be. When I when I recommended it, I thought we would just go straight into like a, uh, you know, okay, here's the plan for uh, getting into the city. Here's what we're gonna do, et cetera, et cetera. But then a whole lot of stuff kept happening, which was good. Um, and unfortunately, all of these good things ha uh, happened off camera. Uh, yeah. But the gist of it being that you guys had a planning rock. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you could say that. That was that's pretty much all there was to it, right? You guys oh, had yeah. your planning rock, and then you talked a little bit. <clears throat> well, we had well, a planning rock. We turned happened? somebody into Alexander. I don't remember who we picked. Yes, Lily. Lily, Lily is now Alexander. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm looking at the quotes now. Oh, actually, first, uh, you tried lying to Beaumont, and he called you out immediately, and then Lena uh, slammed some money down on the planning rock. Wait, and... you still gotta tell me what I slammed down. Uh, Your penis in the car door. Oh yeah, my god. That was it. And he took it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, you tried to play coy with him. Um, not realizing that he is... Because he wants you know, to know about this dragon. Yeah, exactly. And I understand. You tried to play coy for good reason, not realizing that he is... Uh, this is his goddamn job. Oh, I realized that. Um, I was just hoping maybe we could get away with it. Yeah, he rolled very high. Um, I, I, I'm looking at it. Uh, uh, Jenna, you were very upset that uh, Kim rolled an 18 on her deception, and he still called her out. Mm. Um uh so yeah uh the initial deal was uh in exchange for the the coins and the gems he would give you whatever information about the city that you needed and assist your entry into it and then shit went much more wild from that um let's see if we see. wanted to ask alexander permission mm -hmm. to get this guy involved because he was very insistent on getting involved in the tower right yeah uh he implies that he has a stake in uh finding out you know what happened the truth of oladon's tower but uh doesn't say anything more than that uh at the beginning anyway uh which i didn't think would actually come into play for quite a while until um, you had the very bright idea to bring Alexander into it. Uh, you say that, that like was it that. was stupid. What? No, I'm saying it was a great idea. I'm saying like it was a, it was know, a good idea know, to bring. The him. way you said it, it sounded like I didn't imply. I didn't mean to imply <laughs> that. Um, it was a good idea. Okay. And it just so happened to unravel my my cool character's mysterious backstory uh immediately so <laughs> so you know whatever i guess <laughs> this is fine <laughs> um he gives you very specific information about how many knights are there and since i'm looking at it i will just read it beaumont smirks uh oh i need a voice for beaumont here we go You you had one uh, you had one at fuck. the very end of the recording. I did? Oh, you fuck. did. It's gonna be completely different. I've got nothing. I have no idea what it was. Please tell me what it was. Go ahead. Um, uh, shit. I'd have to. Uh, let me. Was let it me British? Grab it. Let me was see. It British? Let me see. Let me grab it. Because I've been imagining British. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. And uh, I can do my really good British accent. <laughs> We know this must have been. Oh, I'm Beaumont. Okay, no, it was not was Cockney. That was that it? It was 100% not a Cockney accent. Okay. What did you say, Ben? Oh, what's going like, on over here? Canonically, it was her her new wild magic abilities that were. It's able Beaumont. To... We went back to the temple. Uh... <laughs> um... Do you remember? Wait. Uh, like out. Uh, wait. 
No, we went back to the tent. Hey, it's all right. I will just, tales, if it's different, yeah, it's different. But also, uh, okay, maybe you uh, didn't. What? Oh, maybe, maybe I didn't. Maybe anyway, you didn't. <clears throat> he's just, he's, he's, uh, it's uh, sort of a, a very, what? He tries to present himself in a very fancy, what? fancy, fancy, and mysterious. No, just more like very formal and elegant. Yes. He tries to present him, himself as sort of like a, uh, a higher crust type of person. Well. Um, <clears throat> so Lena asks uh, if he has an estimated number of uh, silver flame in the city. And he says, who do you think I am? I have an exact number. The initial presence was a single squad of five, which then received four more squads of five from Nuval as backup after the second sighting, bringing the total to 25. The entire, entire, oh, he can't say the word entire. That's a fun character flaw for him. I'll put that on the sheet. The entire 24th company came into port recently, allowing them to enact the checkpoint system in earnest, numbering 80 knights and clerics in total. Twenty of them have been dispatched across the island to reinforce the squads sent on reconnaissance from Nuval. They were escorting a High Cleric's personal platoon of twenty, as well as the High Cleric Dara Lumana herself. She is here to head the, the search on the island personally. This makes a total of 105 knights and clerics in and around the city proper, in addition to the High Cleric. And uh, I specified that Thought knows the name Dara Lumana as one of the elders of the Council of the Silver Flame. So, like, the top level. Yeah. Um, there is no one higher than this council. Uh, he has never met her nor any of the elders, but knows her to be an elf of fairly advanced age, and he has been told that she is the eldest of the current counselors and is well-loved and respected by all who have the privilege to meet her. Um, then Sean shows up and says hi. Oh, does he? Yeah. Oh. And posts a picture of Kirby. Oh, wow. Yep. Um, let's see. Hi, Cleric Lumana is commanding forces from the Silver Spoon, which is an inn slash tavern in the higher class area of the city that they've commandeered as a headquarters for no small amount of gold. Uh, she moves around the city at her leisure, but she's never left, to his knowledge. Yeah. Uh, Uh, let's see. Lena asks if the Silver Flame shares his theory that you guys have some sort of link with the dragon, and he says he doesn't know, uh, because they keep a very tight lid on things, uh, and he it's hard to crack the religious devotion of the average knight. Um, but that said, they're not stupid. He's very good at what he does, and it doesn't take, uh, but it doesn't take a genius to connect the messy dots that you've left behind. Yeah, where is no, if they have not considered this connection, I would eat my steel-tipped boot. <laughs> Thought suggests leaving, <laughs> which is cool. Uh... He's, he's still just, trying his trying best to, to game this guy in any way he <laughs> can. It, it's not working, but he's trying. Okay. I'm just trying to scan through. There's a lot here. I'm trying to scan through for important bits. Um, Beaumont tries to speed things along a little bit. Um, he says, so the issue at hand lies with the ever-growing presence of the Silver Flame. They have heavily secured the city and set up checkpoints throughout, including at all entrances, which you may imagine is quite bothersome to those in my profession. The general idea behind this, I believe, is to prevent the dragon from coming and going in a humanoid form, which many do enjoy. Uh, citizens are for the most part confined to the zones that they live in, uh, but are issued certificates which allow them to pass into other zones for the purpose of work, relatives, and things of that nature. Um, Thought is questioning the fact that they're just allowing this occupation to happen, uh, and Beaumont points out that the mayor has not been seen uh, since the High Cleric arrived, uh, which leads him to believe that the mayor may have been bribed or possibly even charmed. Yes. Um, 
The second problem lies in the answer to one of your initial questions. Yes, you are well-known criminals here. Your escape was overall too large to cover up. What with the sounds of battle that echoed all the way to the walls from the forest, followed by the dragon's less than discreet arrival in the forest, uh, you're nothing less than famous. The bards sing a song about you, you know, uh, glorifying you into some kind of rebels with righteous cause, fighting for the poor, saving the town from some kind of abomination in the tower. You've only gotten more popular with time and the growing unpopularity of the Silver Flame. Uh, the Flame wants the dragon, and these righteous criminals defend it. This is to your advantage. So, that's an important little titty bit there. Ha. Hmm. <laughs> um, that you've got the town on your side for the most part. Uh, let's see. And the goblins. They love us. And the goblins. You've got goblins on your side. Mm-hmm. Wait, do you know about the goblins? What? What do you know about the goblins? <laughs> One's uh, name is Gimlick. Whitmore knows very little. Um, he's just been kind of connected to... Um, oh, shoot, what's his name, Dan? Beaumont. Beaumont. Shady um, Beaumont, they call him. Shady Beaumont. We've been doing, like, odd jobs for him. Um, the goblins are extremely important. They tried to mug us, and we beat their asses. And instead of killing some of them, we said, why don't you go do something that you love? And they're like, but our boss. And so we killed their boss, and then they made a dance troupe. Yeah. Oh, because, I see why they're important. Because Gemlik likes dance, he said. <laughs> he really had to think of something that he liked off the top of his head because he was persuaded to do so. Yeah. So Gimlick likes dancing. Um, no better way to start a dance troupe. Yeah, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, this is uh, important too. Uh, speaking of Whitmore, Beaumont would have informed you that the question of the timing of the occupation and the disappearance of the mayor is actually what he's hired Whitmore to investigate though they're both finding it exceptionally difficult to find a lead in the case. Uh, that said, with Whitmore being an old pro at investigations like this, that alone is suspicious. It's too clean. The mayor is too perfectly removed from the situation, hence the, the charm conjecture. Uh, Beaumont does not believe the Silver Flame would go so far as to murder innocents, but does acknowledge that desperate times call for desperate measures, so it can't be ruled out. So just so I'm wrapping my head around this, we think the mayor's charmed because he's too removed from what? He's just Everything. gone. He, he, nobody's he has seen not been him. seen. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And Ever since the, the high cleric arrived, he has just been off the map. Yes. No one knows where just, he is. He's not just sitting in his office being like, ah, yes, this is fine. He's just fucking gone. Oh, I mean, right? you don't know. No one has okay. seen him. That's all. So we don't know if he he's not made public appearances. In place or if he's just exactly the city. Or... You don't. You don't know if he's involved, if he's been charmed, or if he's dead, or if he's just gone. You, he's just the fact is he's that missing he has not for been some gone. reason. Yeah. It is uncharacteristic yep. behavior for this public official. Yes, that is correct. At which point you decide to toss the necklace onto somebody. Um, really. Lily. Lily shouts out, do me, put that weird child in my head, I want to try. Um, Thought gets angry at her for being loud, and she whispers very loudly, okay, put the boy in me. <laughs> and Thought is I very objected. unhappy about that. Yeah, he objected um, strongly to that proposition. Yeah. Lily grabs Thought by the shoulders and stares in, into his eyes. Thought put a baby in me. Um <laughs> Or she would, except someone makes a decision about Alexander first and moves this along before she can. <laughs> so you didn't have to read that. I'm yeah. retconning it. She says that. Yes. <clears throat> Out loud. Yeah. And Thought is now beat red. Uh, thought, uh, you wrote that he dies instantly. Yes. So actually, you need a new character, Aww. which is fun. <laughs> Aww. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, he got so embarrassed he died. <laughs> okay, he didn't literally, literally die. Died. Um, let's see. So you try to very sneakily put the necklace on her. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
she holds her arms out to her sides and whispers, Come on, little man, come on out. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, he Beaumont can see you uh can see her putting something on. Uh you guys rolled perception checks to see what Beaumont is up to. Um Thought is the only one who notices that Beaumont seems to be staring into the fire, tapping his leg with his finger. He doesn't seem to be looking your way. Uh let's see. Alexander shows up, then uh, gets embarrassed when he looks down and sees that he's in a girl again. Um, he gets excited because he thinks that we're going to have fun, and Lena feels guilty because you're not. <laughs> uh, let's see. He gives permission to like go in the tower and whatnot because you vouch for the guy, or kind of. Uh, well, Thought says he doesn't trust him at all. Uh, Lena suggests to talk to him himself. Uh, so Alexander runs over there and introduces himself as Ale Aleg Allegronio Allegronio Big Fire. <laughs> oh um, my God. I hear you want to get into my I mean the tower. <laughs> he did so bad. Mm -hmm. He did so bad. Uh as, as soon as Beaumont starts introducing himself, uh, Alexan Alexander freaks out and calls him Uncle Monty. Yep. And uh, that's when the whole big backstory comes. Uh, let's see. The big ha adult half-orc Alexander Lily tackles him off of his rock and onto the ground. Uh, let's see, let's see. All right, followed by an extended conversation of explanations that will be summarized. Alexander explains what you already know, presented here as a friendly recap, and maybe slightly easier to follow for Mitch. Let's see if it is. Oladon's <laughs> planar teleportation experiments went wrong. Extra planar material overlapped catastrophically, seemingly annihilating anything and everything in the general area. Alexander was caught in the effect and was likely killed. Oladon lost his mind obsessing over accessing the fugue plane to rescue his son's soul and insert it into a custom-fashioned soul crystal. When he finally succeeded in accessing the fugue plane and casting the spell to pluck Alexander's soul from the fugue plane, however, the current Alexander explaining the story posits that his soul was not there. This caused the spell to backfire and pluck the nearest thing to Alexander's soul, which is Oladon's memories of him. Between the powerful spell rending Oladon's mind apart and perhaps some effect of the energies from the portal to the fugue plane, it transformed him into a twisted creature with only scattered remnants of Oladon's former self. The other parts of his mind were set into the soul crystal, becoming the current Alexander, a fabricated being with a sense of self created from the memories of the real Alexander, containing fragmented memories and knowledge of Oladon as well. Alexander explains the events of how you met, slew the twisted Oladon remnant, and forced the incomplete lich from the tower before being arrested. Uh, and Beaumont listens to it all and seems to be trying not to cry. Yeah. And uh, let's see, Beaumont explains that his interest in the tower stemmed from a desire to enter and investigate the truth behind the events that transpired there. He was a frequent visitor to Oladon's tower in the past, forging a partnership with the old wizard. Oladon required many unique and rare things for his studies, and Beaumont would procure them in exchange for information and other services. He credits Oladon for his rise to the station of power he currently holds in the city, and came to appreciate the gnome and his family's company as well. Alexander took a liking to him as well, as Beaumont would frequently bring him little unique presents when he came calling on business. So that's why they have a good relationship. Yes. Um, and specifically, after the implosion that unknown to him cost Alexander his life, he attempted many times to contact Oladon and enter the tower, but never received an answer and never broke through the defenses. It seems Oladon specifically barred him from using the password to the front door, as he was the only one, to his knowledge, that knows that code. Well. Damn uh, magic. And that's the, by and large, of the backstory stuff there. 
Um, let's see. Let's see. Sorry, this is taking a while because we did a lot on here. Yeah. We did. Uh, we did a lot. He uh, is much more warm to you now, whereas before he was putting on very intense airs of, of I am better than you, I am very important, etc. He's now a lot more normal, a bit more casual, still a bit fancy, but still much more casual. Um, and he says, consider yourselves my personal guests during your stay here. I will, of course, offer whatever assistance I'm able as payment for everything you've done for Alexander and Oladon, you need only but ask. Um, as far as your assumptions about the guards' overall attitude and misgivings, you're likely not far off. Their inability to handle the tower situation had always been no small public humiliation, one they were forced to reluctantly accept. Not only did you draw the public eye back to their failures, but entered seemingly without difficulty and created a very public spectacle by blasting the golem from the top floor. I believe their actions in imprisoning you were more about removing you from the public and controlling the flow of information, no doubt hoping to prevent you from becoming some sort of folk heroes, at which it seems they've failed. What a bunch and, of bitches. Typical cop and Ale shit. <laughs> and Alexander Lilly gets excited and says we're heroes. Aww. Uh, let's see. I'm certain if they gained entry, it would be to ransack the tower for valuables and magics, then likely to demolish the building itself. They would very much like for the citizens of Crossroad to forget about the entire situation and improve their standing among them. Um, so he confirms that you guys still want to go into the tower knowing all of this stuff, and you seem to agree that you are still in on it. Um, we gotta do it. Uh, Lena says that if they've indeed kidnapped the mayor or worse, I don't mind fighting them. No offense thought. Uh, yeah, uh, Nefmir asked uh, for Thought's perspective on how we should approach any followers of the Silver Flame. I imagine it would be impossible to outright avoid them at all in Crossroad, and I don't think we want to come to blows, and Thought says that would be preferable. Uh, um... Does Whitmore know why we want to get in the tower? Wait, does Whitmore know or does Beaumont know? Whitmore. Does Mitch know? I mean, both of them. Know. Okay. So go ahead. <laughs> you um, think there's so, a clue about the mayor there? Oh. No, not at all. It's way. not related at all. There's. Uh, I had uh, a vision of the tower mm -hmm. where we fought the lich, and um, I saw uh, a hole in space time, basically, akin to a portal. And a leg was sneaking through it, trying to get through. It couldn't get through yet. So. So you think that perhaps there's but, something a little bit more dangerous going on there? Well, we think yeah. a rift is opening there. And if it does... We, we then, just saw one in another town. Yeah, more eldritch horrors can come through. So Yeah, we initially had them all describe the situation to you, but do you remember the whole, like, portal situation? It's, it's been so long, I'm, like, <laughs> probably spacing. All right, so go ahead. <laughs> I've been talking for a while. It's okay, okay, I'll do it. Um, Here we go. So we went to... We went to a town called Haven. We were looking for the Sword of the Silver Flame, because we had reason to believe it was there when we got to the town everybody was acting weird we went to sleep we woke up the next morning and uh everybody was still being really strange and we noticed people not remembering or noticing things that they should um some of us saw blood some of us didn't some of us saw a broken window some of us didn't and would like refuse to look at it kim went crazy and summoned a triangle creature that was like what the fuck and stabbed that's, at us that's just Elena bullshit. yeah that's yeah that was before she did that again and turned into a sheep but yeah while we're in this town we're there's clearly something there and we were trying so hard to figure out what the fuck it is and it's not working well we we got dan to just tell us uh 
by um, <laughs> turning Lena into Alexander, and then he he basically <laughs> was like able to figure out a whole bunch of shit for us. Um, so yeah, they 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 had the idea to bring in Alexander, and then asked him a bunch of questions because he has Oladon's magical knowledge in there oh. somewhere. Yeah. So I had him roll like intelligence checks, history checks, stuff like that, Ar- Arcana checks to see if he knew what they were talking about. And he rolled incredibly well, so he just kind of knew a lot. Which is great, because we had, were not he figuring had some, it out. He had some suggestions of possibilities. Yeah, key insights. Um, that they were able to act on. But then, that was just the first half of Dan just telling us the answer because we were so stupid. Because the second half was, <laughs> was uh, Gerald, who is now named Gerard Way, um, <laughs> figuring it out, basically, in the tavern with me. And we figured out that whatever was doing this was doing it through sound. So we we were able to like plug all the windows and all the holes in the tavern, and then we heard ringing, uh, which is what happens after you hear a really loud sound. When it's done, then your ears ring. So we were like, oh, we can't hear the sound now. So the next morning, we plugged our ears with candle wax, and mm-hmm. went outside, and we <laughs> saw the giant, gross, false hydra creatures with their gross necks and huge, disgusting heads and teeth. Just the and one shit. creature, actually. Just the one creature, actually. It is just the one, but we we only saw the, the multiple necks at that point. True. Yeah, that's true. Um, we <laughs> fought the thing. It retreated into a hole in the ground, which I don't know how we didn't fall in before, but we didn't. Um yeah. Yeah, weird, huh? Even though I quote jumped in it unquote. Yeah. Yeah, weird, huh? Yeah, very weird. But yeah. um weird how that works. We, we, oh, I know what it is in retrospect. I think you had to get up on the hydra's back and that's what happened. <laughs> sure, something like that. That's, that's not that's what happened. We went down the hole, we found a natural oh. cave that the thing was living in, and that's when we saw it was actually just one body with these many necks attached to it. And there was also a portal to another dimension. <laughs> Another plane, to use the D and D term. Mm. Uh, a so bunch we of chicken nuggets spilled out of it. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you could say that. Yeah, they weren't chicken though. Yeah, plop down the picture of the chicken nuggets. Yeah, I'll plop down. It's the in the recording. You, you can just, although, whatever. It's fine. You can do it if you want. It's for Mitch. Sure. You guys on this page? What page? On the roll twenty page. You, guys, you see a fire? Yeah. Just yep. little bipedal yep. mouths, basically. Yeah. We're just pouring out, and they were being fought by a couple of warriors from another world on the other side of the portal. Oh, those things. Yeah, chicken those nuggets. things. <laughs> are, I can see why you'd call them chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> oh my yeah, gosh. I need some water. Oh yeah, no, also, this is the, the thing that they're talking about. Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, it really yeah. was. Um, it ate Lena for a little while. For a little bit. Ooh. Yeah, so that that sucked. It was not good. So we're fighting this thing, um, and creatures are coming out of the portal, and we see these two mysterious-looking people in the portal, in the other plane, fighting them, preventing some of them from getting through. Um, a displacer beast comes through, and Nefmir sprays poison on it, which was hilarious. Kitty. Um, the yeah. delivery in that for that one is, is really funny. Um, at some point, I decided I probably just need to grab the sword. So I went and got it, and then, oops, uh, Groomsh took control of my body, and the f- sword turned black. Oh, the sword shit. didn't turn black. The fire turned black. Yeah, the, f- the fire on the sword turned black. Yeah, and from your, yeah. and from you. Yes. Well, it, it, from me, f- what happened is first he made me stab my own eyeball out yeah. by just my head falling onto the sword. In my yeah. left oh. eye. So now my left yeah, eye is gone. Did a, and did a bad, did a, thought did a little bad, uh, bad roll there. Black flames came out of my eyeball, and my blood, when it hit the ground, turned into black flames. Um, and then, shut up, Kim. We went over this. <laughs> <laughs> then uh <clears throat> he made me do some stuff. He cut off one of the heads completely, which was, you know, whack. Cool. Rad. 
because we've been fighting these things and you can't just cut them off. He does it in one sweep to show how powerful he is. And he, to be fair, he is a guy. He was god. also very low on health at that point. You did Shut a good up. job. Shut up, Dan. <laughs> We're, he's, he's demonstrating the power of his godliness. So then uh, Thought then goes and starts fighting Gerard Way and, and just just barely, barely doesn't kill him somehow. Mm-hmm. And Gerard in his resistance and uh, persuasive speaking uh, is able to finally get me to have the strength to resist Grumsh and I kick so, him out of I mean, my body. The The key there is that Gerard Way is also a, a member of the Silver Flame. Yes. Just like Thought is. So he's able to sort of like resonate with him to try to remind him of, you know, who he is and what he do and whatnot. So uh, that helped with your wisdom saving throw. Yeah, and then I I made it, and I got control of my body back, and I immediately shot a guiding vault at the displacer beast, which completely missed. And at that point, I <laughs> turned around and ran the other way. <laughs> um, Nefmir got knocked out <laughs> because of that, um, but I did. I jumped up onto the dead false hydra's body and then made a running leap at the portal, mm. striking it with the sword, uh, cleaving it with the sword, at which point it closed. Because the Silver Flame itself spoke to me and said that it... Well, actually, one of the voices of the Silver Flame, I should say, uh, was basically like, hey, do this. <laughs> so I did it, and then the something portal was, was, it was, it was less. It was or cauterized wounds or something. It said that yes. it told you that... Uh, the voice told you that the... The, the what, fire like of the, the flame... Fire of the flame can cauterize any wound. Any wound, yes. You still had to make the connection. Let me synopsize it in, in a funnily incorrect way. Well, you keep, <laughs> you keep selling yourself short, and I'm, I don't agree with that. So. Oh, whatever. Keep going. Uh, that's, that's about it. So that's where we know that... That's how we know anything about interplanar stuff, including the creatures that we saw specifically. And so. also why we feel kind of responsible for taking care of it, because we know that thought can. I can do it, yes. So um, So that's yeah. why we're and, going uh, to the tower. With the gods. Well, I was going to say, after that, <laughs> after that, thought had a dream, uh, which he saw m- multiple uh, similar portals in different places. Yeah. Uh, and you don't know offhand where the majority of them are, except for this one they recognize because they've been there before. So right. the uh, other one was some kind of weird stone library that I don't know mm-hmm. what it is, but we knew this one. And the other one was in the sky somewhere. Which also doesn't help. So Yeah. Yeah, not so good. Um Oh, you know who can go in the sky though? Who that? Uh the Ale Gilder man. Oh, that dragon. He can that go dragon. in the sky. A dragon. Yeah. He can do that. So because there's because there's wings. Well, in case of, you haven't noticed, wings. we absolutely know a dragon. <laughs> yes. Yeah. By the way, we know a dragon. His name's Ale. Yeah, Gilder. it's so you. If you if you don't remember that, actually, Whitmore also knows the dragon. <clears throat> what? He doesn't I don't know that, he's that. A dragon. Well, doesn't know the dragon specifically, but knows. Has met the dragon. What? I meet the dragon? I don't remember meeting a dragon. You don't oh, know. You, you didn't know it was a dragon. You didn't know that you met a dragon. Oh right, you... I see what you mean. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. As well. I met a dragon, but I don't. Because it's cleric yeah. Yen Ben. Oh. And it, and it sure seems like everybody on this island wants to kill the dragon because they're a bunch <laughs> of bored country folk. It seems. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Silver Flame wants the dragon because they know that he had the sword, which he did. That is true. But now he does not. I have it. That's right. That's also important backstory as well. They don't, but they don't know that you have it. They don't, and they need to yes. not find out because they can't yeah. take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, they the... want to have a new head paladin of the Silver Flame, and they want to have the sword itself because they haven't had it for centuries. So and I think Parva was like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Parva was like, they want to choose the paladin themselves. 
Oh, yeah. yes. But they Instead also of like the, the, the sword the, falls into someone's hands. That's, the the that's idea it. is whoever holds the the blade, the sword of the silver flame, is like the uh, the chosen paladin, like chosen to represent the silver flame's interests. Uh, but uh, up until, well, I mean that's how it was historically. But the implication is that more recently. Well, not recently, because it's been quite a while now, but the last several have been chosen by the council and yeah. then given the sword yeah. instead. And it's so now also... it's fallen into someone's hands who they did not choose. Exactly that. Yeah. Um, but they it was taken um, after the previous uh, holder died. Uh, Ao Gilder, the dragon Yenben, uh, took the sword and uh, fled with it because he was told, boy, this is getting very, very far back into different backstories here. Um, the general idea being he knew that uh, the previous holder of the flame wanted it to go somewhere else because he was dreaming that it needed to go there. So uh, Yen Ben Dragon took the sword and took it to this island because that's where the previous owner knew that it needed to go. But uh, the uh, Order of the Silver Flame people were not happy about that. It's really uh, bad so PR that they don't have the sword. Exactly that, yeah. There hasn't been a Paladin of the Silver Flame for uh, an extremely long time now, and that's bad for business. <laughs> Um, and so it's it's actually a secret that they don't have the sword, um, but uh, they've just been saying there is a uh, there is a dragon. He is bad. Go kill him. But that's why. But that's why. For real. That's the but actual that's, reason. So that's why your mayor is missing. <laughs> <Technically>. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're here. They are. Uh, the dragon was sighted for the first time in an extremely long time, rescuing them here in the city. Uh, so now, uh, now that there's actually been an official sighting of this dragon for the first time in like a century, uh, they are coming out in force uh, to this island to search for the sword and search for the dragon. That's what we're doing here. Uh huh. All right. I think right. I'm mildly caught up. I'll get the rest there's, of there's, context. There's views. probably a better way to, to recap all this, but... Yeah, know. maybe. There yeah. is, and it would take uh, several <laughs> weeks worth of editing what? to do it. Well, where's... I was going to say, where's the clip show? What happened to the clip show? Where's that clip? <laughs> okay, Um. from now on, you are the official editor. No, oh, God. have fun with that. Oh no! Oh no! no I've made a huge mistake. You've made a huge mistake. You oh, glorious no. idiot! Oh, beans! Oh, beans. <laughs> All right. By the way, I'm, I just noticed that uh, Queepus has been lit up for a while. Are you trying to say something? He's not. No, it I'm... just does that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's just the default. Don't worry about just it. Just making sure. Just making sure that we're not missing when anything. When it's not trying. lit up, I probably have uh, software mute on. Okay. Okay, okay. All right. So, moving on here. Uh Let's see. Oh yeah, so uh Beaumont thinks he's going to fill you in with some like super top secret high value information that uh he worked really hard to get and no one knows but him and he tells you this super super secret that the silver flame itself, the symbol of their creed, the very embodiment of countless paladins of their order, has been lost for centuries. It was taken from them by what may be this very dragon. And then he sits back and takes you all in, waiting for the big... <gasps> but you already knew. Yeah. Uh, Whitmore didn't know that, though, so... Just be like... Uh... Wait, why is nobody surprised? Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, huh. It says I, Lena leaned not, back against the, the tree, not slowly. <laughs> um, 
uh, thought sa- says, like, how can you be sure of that, though? And he looks amused and says, I have it on good authority from Oladon himself. He was there when it happened, and he paints a slightly different picture than the Silver Flame. Uh, that's also part of the backstory. Oladon, who was the owner of this tower, was part of this original party of yes. the uh, Silver Flame Paladin and the Dragon and a couple other people. Including a butterfly lady who's very weird. Don't worry about the butterfly lady right now. Who's been around. (laughs) Not not important, huh? Hey, we need that. Not important right now. We need to throw Mitch every single backstory. (laughs) Yeah, shit. Oh my god. (laughs) Don't worry about it. No, it is fine. Don't worry about it. It's just mentioning it in passing as a joke. I like this. This is good for, like, canonical for... uh, Canonically, Whitmore is confused as fuck because it's a really... (laughs) Weird situation. Yeah, that's true. This is good. This yeah. is good. <laughs> Whitmore doesn't know what the fuck's going on, so <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for Mitch, but it's good for Whitmore. <laughs> <laughs> it is good. Good for my role playing then too. Yeah, I, I yeah. Won't say perfect. anything that I that Whitmore wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to. All right. Um. That's right. So at this point, I try to cut it off and say, like, damn. You know, this is getting way more interesting than I was hoping it would be. And, you know, we need to do some heist planning, etc. But so just to sort of wrap things up, or so I thought. um, Beaumont asks Lena to reproduce the minor illusion of the tower and begins explaining how it looks, suggesting she make those changes as well, saying... The Silver Flame has taken particular notice of the tower having been the center of the initial activity. I'm certain they believe that the tower holds the the answer as much as I did. They have built scaffolding uh, surrounding the entire tower, draping uh, draping fabric between in an effort to obscure their efforts from the public. As far as I know, they've been unsuccessful in entering. Uh, This is a tad perplexing to me. The riddle to unlock the door, although entertaining is hardly a level of which it, the high cleric and elf herself should have such difficulty with. Uh, and you hear a small ah escape from Alexander Lilly's mouth, and he, he says, uh, of course you wouldn't know to, resell, uh, to reset the spell when you left. I forgot to tell you about it, but it actually worked out better this way. Uh, then starts freaking out a little bit, because there may not be a way back in, unless you have the scale, the magic scale. Which and uh, Lena has it. Yes. And uh, let's see. Has it uh, like a gravity Lily spell to... on the door? Exactly. Ooh. Yeah. Well, not, not, no, a gravity spell not on the door, but you can cast a gravity spell on the door. Sure. Uh, the spell has to be reset once it's triggered. The door is massively heavy. The only way it opens is with magic, either the password triggered gravity spell or with this. If you don't reset the password spell from the inside, the only way to feasibly move the door is by adjusting its weight with this. Dad said he was the only one smart enough to figure out this kind of magic, and I think he was actually right. So, good thing you have it, yeah. basically. Uh, and good thing we didn't know to reset <laughs> the door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, thought says... Oh, no, maybe I think Jenna says, I mean, if the flamers set up the scaffolding around the tower, couldn't they just walk into the giant hole? Couldn't we just walk into the giant hole? Door method seems fine, but it seems like we can also just go in the giant hole. Um, I don't think that was implied to be thought talking, but I took it to be thought talking. And uh, Alexander uh, laughs at you. Yeah. Yeah. Like a And dick. says, sorry, sorry, I forgot you're not uh, magically literate. Um <sighs> The the whole tower is held together with magic. The stones are mostly there for aesthetic reasons, and they also function as items to frame the magic field as well as facilitate the flow of magic, and and then they stop and, and look up sheepishly and say, so it's like the stone covers up a magic bubble. The hole isn't big enough to disrupt the bubble, so it should still be impenetrable for the most part. It's weaker and easier to get through than anywhere else for sure, but I'd bet they'd still have a hard time getting through. Um... You point out, how did the folem, the folem, the golem fall out then? And they say that the field is directional. And says, shutting yourself in is a fire hazard. Yeah. Smart. Um, Lena asks how the lich got, got in. 
Uh, and then questions whether we've mentioned the Lich at all yet. Uh, Alexander considers and suggests, um, I guess I have to assume the Lich is powerful enough to break through the barrier. Uh, it's still possible to teleport in and out, though, so maybe there's that, too. Uh, normally you have to see where you're going, so that would protect the tower, but if you can just see in through a hole, then there's no reason that wouldn't work. Yeah. And at which point, Lena gets excited and says, I think I can do that. Uh, she was and wrong. Then, and then she dies. Well, we don't know that, but she is gone. Mitch's face. She did teleport away. <laughs> See, now I'm sad. I'm sad that the stupid video thing doesn't work. Like, maybe I could have caught that. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm just so annoyed by that. That's okay. Next time. I'm sure Mitch will make more faces as the story unravels in front of him. <laughs> I know, but it's just, it's sad because I won't, it's not going to be on the recording. Sure. So anyway, so what happens is uh, uh, Lena starts to describe that she has, uh, in her dreams anyway, uh, sort of moved through uh, reality like the butterfly lady. Yeah. Um, but never on purpose. And then... Uh, <laughs> retconning this because she and I forgot about it until we watched the video uh, that Jenna put up. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. She actually did use this spell uh, when fighting the big snake man. To teleport uh, me. To teleport you, yes. So mm -hmm. I'm going to say mechanically, canonically here that, like, so what we're doing is that's Dimension Door, the spell, but we're going to be flavoring it for her magic. Um, for her wild magic here. And, uh, we're going to say that she did do it properly there in the dungeon, but not on purpose. It was sort of like a an adrenaline, like, you know, she just figured it out on the fly. Like, she knew she needed to do it, and she did it without thinking too heavily about it. Yeah. Uh, but this will be her first time actively attempting to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what she fucks up real fucking good. Yeah. Um... You rolled very poorly, if I remember right. I because got for this, one, baby. Yeah, yeah. For this first time, I decided that it would, you know, for this first time actually trying to do this weird thing, I decided that it would be more fun to make it difficult. And then you rolled a nat one, so everything went very poorly. So, uh, let's see. <clears throat> Uh, you reach out and close your eyes, searching for that feeling. It's extremely unique. You know you'll f know it when you feel it, but it's not there. Maybe you get a bit frustrated. You know this should work, so you keep searching. You stretch your senses out further, pushing and pushing, losing yourself a bit in the process. No longer searching for the right thread, you reach blindly for any. And finally, when you feel the faint trace of what you recognize as a thread, you make one final push for it. Your wild magic surges out into the void toward that thread, but you fail to direct it entirely. The moment you grasp that thread, your wild magic takes the form of pure lightning and arcs out from your body in a 60-foot diameter, slamming into Alexander, Lily, Beaumont, uh, several goblins, and Thought or Nefmir if they believe they would be in that circle, taking 19 lightning damage. I assume Whitmore too, right? If Whitmore is there? Yes. Whitmore too. if uh, you think that you would be nearby in that 60-foot diameter, which is a pretty good <laughs> diameter. Um, 19? Damage. 19 damage, yeah. Lightning damage. Um, right. And if, if it wasn't clear, that was a uh, wild magic surge that I rolled for. Or did you roll for it? I forget. One of us rolled. Yeah, one of us rolled for it. Um, I said, Alexander Lily cries out in pain and surprise, Beaumont curses colorfully with an accent that he has not shown up until now. The goblins are knocked flat on their asses, shrie shrieking as they pat out the singeing embers of their nice clothes. Beaumont spits blood at the ground and rears up to look at you, saying, I sincerely doubt that was the intention, when he trails off as he finds that you no longer stand where you just were. The moment you grasped that thread, in fact, you were immediately overtaken and hurled into the void. And Aww. I told... I sent Kim... Uh, Kim and I did this on our own. We've already handled the aftermath of that that you guys are unaware of uh so that's where we are right now um hey, can we take a pee break <laughs> before we actually start playing yeah sure 
yeah, that's where we're going to start after the pee break. Um, uh, Lena tried to do her teleportation thing to prove, like, a proof of concept to be able to get through that hole, and then immediately exploded with lightning, hurting all of you, yeah. and disappearing into the night. And that's where we're at. Everyone go have a wonderful pee time. <sighs> um, no time or anything like that. Just go pee and come back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Farewell. Hit the music. Right. Right. Cue music. Cue music. Right. Right. Music. Different. different music. <laughs> well, that could be the music. There's, time there's, music. A, there's, a, there's a specific pee time music that they put in the videos. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to cue that music. <laughs> Here it comes. Ready? It's a dick game song. Yeah, it's a dick game song. Ready? Music. And that's a nice cue for you when you're doing the video edit. Wow, thank you. Yeah, you bet. Okay. <laughs>